In this video we're going to look at completing the square, a really important technique in maths. And we do all sorts of things like it, with it, like proving the quadratic formula, really nice way of dealing with quadratics. Um, so what completed square form is, it, it applies to quadratics, so something like this, I've got x squared plus 8x plus 5, and it's in completed square form if I rewrite it like this. So x plus 4 squared minus 11. So the completed square form is going to have something in brackets squared, some sort of something linear in brackets squared. So this is just a simpler thing, x plus 4, all squared. And then outside of the brackets, all we can have is a number. In some harder examples, we might allow this bracket to be multiplied by a number in front, like, you know, 2 here or something. But but this one is x plus 4 squared minus 11. And, and you can really can check that this works. We just have to multiply this out. So x plus 4 squared uh, minus 11, that would give us x squared plus, uh, well, let's write it out in full, so it's x plus 4 times x plus 4 minus 11, so that's x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 minus 11, so that gives us x squared plus 8x plus 5, which is what we started with. And what we can see when we multiply out something like x plus a number squared, that number in there ends up doubled down here, so it was x plus 4 squared, and we end up with x squared plus 8x, and it also has an impact on the other number, but that's the main thing we'll use. So when I'm looking for my completed square form, something like this, where it's just x squared plus some number of x, I'm just going to halve that value of x, put it in brackets, square it, and then see how I need to adjust my answer. So let's say I had x squared plus 6x plus 7, I'm going to halve that 6 to get 3, and say, well, this would be the same as x plus 3 squared. Now I need to add on some number here. Now if I multiply out x plus 3 squared, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And the way I like to think about this is I'm just looking at these two terms and I'm trying to make this match up to x squared plus 6x. So I haven't got uh, quite what I want here, but if I subtracted the 9 on both sides, then I would just be left with my x squared plus 6x. So if I subtract 9, that gives me these terms, and then I add 7, because uh, I've still got plus 7 here, so I get x plus 3 squared minus 2, and that's the completed square form. Of course, you could just say, okay, well, this would be plus 9, so I need to subtract 2 to get to 7. Maybe let's get there. Um, it gives us a nice, sort of neat, repeatable method, I suppose. Here's another one. Now I've got minus. Now if I do, if I multiply out x minus a squared, we get x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. So this time, whatever number's in here is still doubled. We've just got a minus in front of it, so I need to take this minus 4 and halve it to get minus 2. So that's uh, x minus 2 squared. And if I multiplied that out, I'd get x squared minus 4x plus 4. So I need to subtract the 4, and that leaves me with this x squared minus 4x, and then plus 5, so I get x minus 2 squared plus 1. It's quite easy once you get the hang of them. Half the minus 12, so that's x minus 6 squared. The thing that we're at taking off all, all the time is always this number squared, so it's just minus 36 and then my plus 15, so uh, I get x minus 6 squared um, minus 36 plus 15, so minus 21. And eventually, you know, we, we don't think about these uh, too much as we're doing them. Let's say I've got x squared plus 18x plus 71. That would be x plus 9 squared, because of half of 18. 9 squared is 81, so I take that off, and I've still got my 71. So I get x plus 9 squared minus 10. Okay, so in the other ones it's all been even, so halving it hasn't caused us too much problems. Um, but... Uh, I'll just do the same thing here with x squared plus 7x plus 4, so I get x plus 3.5. Nice and easy to write that as 7 over 2. Um, if I multiply that out, I'd get an extra 7 over 2 squared, so I need to subtract 7 over 2 squared and add on 4. So this is x plus 7 over 2 squared. Now this is minus 49 over 4. 4 is 16 over 4, so that gives me a 33 over 4 negative there, uh, and that's my completed square form. So nothing different with an odd number, just some, might get some fractions in there that make it a bit awkward. 
great thing about completed square form is that we can solve these sort of equations and learn some things about the function as we go along. So here, x squared plus 6x plus 2, that's x plus 3 squared, then I subtract 9 plus 2, so I've got minus 7 here. Um, so if I wanted to solve uh, x squared plus 6x plus 2 equals 0, that's the same as x plus 3 squared minus 7 equals 0, or x plus 3 squared equals 7, so I've got x plus 3 is plus or minus the square root of 7, and so uh, x equals here minus 3 uh, plus or minus the square root of 7. And you notice this looks a bit like the sort of thing we get out of the quadratic formula. Okay, there was no divided by anything here. Um, but, you know, we're solving a quadratic equation, so we'd expect to get something similar. And actually, in another video, um, you can see I've proved how to solve the quadratic uh, equation in general to get the formula. And you do that by essentially completing the square on your general quadratic. And the other thing that we can get nicely from this form is if I... Let's just go back to this completed square form is I can see what the sort of biggest or smallest value this can be. Now I know this is a positive quadratic, so it's a it's got that sort of shape, so it's going to have a minimum value somewhere. The question is, where does that minimum value occur? Well, uh, if the function is x plus 3 squared minus 7, well for different values of x, uh, so let's say, you know, minus, uh, let's take, you know, like minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, 1 and 3, and think about what uh, x plus 3 squared would be, right? So for minus 5 that would be uh, minus 2 squared for minus 3, it would be 0 squared for minus 1, it would be 2 squared for 1, it would be 4 squared for 3, it would be 6 squared. Okay, so this is 4, 0, 4, 16, 36. But because it's something squared, all of these values are always positive. Right, you know, so, that, so this thing can never be negative, it's always got to be bigger than 0. And the smallest value it can be is uh, zero, right? So, uh, so this thing takes its smallest value when x is minus three, and as a consequence, because uh, x plus three squared minus seven is just seven smaller than this, right? I'm just going to subtract seven to get all of these uh, to get the values here, right? So, the smallest value of this must also occur at the same value of x as the smallest value of this. So, this is the smallest value uh, of that x plus 3 squared minus 7 can ever take, it's it's minus 7. Right, so um, so looking at that that quad that completed square form, we can immediately say, well, ah look, that is the uh, you know the minimum value for my quadratic, and the x value it occurs at is just minus this, it's wherever this bracket is made zero when x is minus 3. Uh, you know, it's that zero. So, so this quadratic, uh, you know, is shaped like this, and the bottom point here is has coordinates minus three, seven. That's really useful. Um, so, completed square form is really great. Lots of stuff we can do with it. Um, in the next video, I'll show you completed square form for non-monic quadratics. I.e., you know, what what do I do if I put a number in front of the x squared? How do we how do we change our answers?